Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel sitting inside the 2018 Chrysler it's a Pacifica I don't know what engines in it it's big uh, but the lady has an issue with this thing it pops up on her dash something about uh, checking out the start stop system or the start stops disabled so I'm gonna start it up <laughs> show you what's going on with that she hasn't mentioned any other complaint other than this light being on uh, I've never really ran down one of these systems so I'm not really sure what we're gonna find but I thought I'd bring you along the red light there in the corner that's the throttle light the one that just popped on that's the light we're talking about there let's see start stop unavailable service start stop system and sell sally some seashells by the seashore quite the old tongue twister let's grab a scan tool plug into it see if there's any codes in it and then see if we can get some direction uh, other than that we might have to look in service data to see what to do here we go and we're working on a chrysler and a lot of glare in here but it's summertime so we've kind of got to deal with it a little bit and then we're going to just do a uh, fault scan here once this thing gets ready now we got to gain access to the secured gateway right, secured gateway unlocked you have to have your tool registered with auto authority or look at all them modules well, that didn't take very long, did it? Report. I don't know if these systems have their own module or what, but we're about to find out. ECM, battery B state of charge performance. That's a PWFD system low voltage, and that's for the ABS. Interesting. Battery low voltage. Valid data received, lost com. So that's interesting. Um, battery B. So I believe that these vehicles have two batteries. I believe they have the main battery and then they have their start stop battery. Let me look up this PWFD and see if that is, to see if we just simply have potentially a bad battery. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Probably. That would make sense. Probably the most common issue here. Let's go in here. I just want to go into some live data and see if we can see battery A and battery B. I'm assuming there's a battery A. I didn't see anything in live data that jumped right out to me. I went on to read the theory and operation on this code, this P00FD. It's pretty interesting. They give a really good theory and operation on the start stop system and how the battery works together. The cranking battery, so the big main battery in the car, then this smaller uh, 12 volt auxiliary battery. Uh, they talk about it and who runs what and um, when they're coupled together from a uh, power control relay that latches the two batteries together uh, in parallel. So they stay at 12 volts. Uh, it speaks that during most normal operations, the batteries are hooked together. You know, when you start it with the key or, you know, by pushing the button, um, that they're, they're hooked together. But what happens is you pull up to the stop sign, you know, your car shuts off. The uh, power control relay goes open, disconnecting the two batteries. And then the interior functions on the vehicle, all the consumer electronics run off this little auxiliary battery. And then the car starts off the main battery and that way there you don't see the big voltage drop every time this thing uh, starts you know doesn't kick your radio off and things like that um, so it's pretty interesting and then of course once the engine's running the batteries couple back together and then you know both batteries charge from you know conventional methods you know they all make it. so pretty pretty interesting and then it goes on through you know an entire uh, diagnostic plan as far as um, you know figuring out all these different things which we don't have to go through and do it talks about you know the, how the low side driver works on this uh, relay and and things of that nature i'm going to keep reading but uh, if you guys have factory service data the theory and operation on this is fantastic probably some of the best written sometimes things like this are not explained this well uh in service data but yeah chrysler or whoever is making them in 2018 they did a really nice job on this so I was reading something else here under the diagnostics part where it says it's important for the power relay or the power control relay. So that's the relay that latches the two batteries together basically um, to operate properly for the auxiliary battery to charge correctly with the engine running. 
and disconnected during the auto start event. The PCM will run diagnostics to determine if the power control relay is stuck open or closed. And it says here, during a crank event, the voltage supply from the auxiliary battery to the PCM is monitored. If the voltage drops low enough to cause the PCM to reset, the auxiliary battery state of charge is determined to be low. So when it's in a uh, start stop event, I believe, let's see, during, oh no, this is during a key crank event. So during a regular start, so your key crank, your push button start, they monitor the uh, voltage from that battery and if it drops low enough to cause the PCM to reset, they determine that to be low. So now I come down to uh, the set condition, what's it take to set this code, because that's what we always want to know. And it says here, the vehicle battery voltage supply to the PCM is low enough to cause the PCM to reset during a non-auto start crank event, so during a key start event. They say the vehicle battery up there uh, in, in service info, it stated the auxiliary battery. I think, long story short, is we just need to check both batteries. Uh, they're probably original 2018. That's pretty old. I mean, that you're looking at a six, possibly seven year old set of batteries in there. They're probably junk. But pretty interesting. If you get a chance to, to look this up in service data, go through and read it, uh, I would encourage you to do so. They're very specific on how, uh, how the drivers work in the PCM and how it can detect faults and, and how it can detect each fault and what it looks at, each wire and circuit it looks at. So really impressive and I'm not even a Dodge guy. It's got the big 3.6. Oh, there's that baby. There's those babies, so there's our main battery. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, she must have been cooking it. Blew the dang freaking lids right off the, uh, right off the course here. I don't know if these are G or uh, AGM batteries. That's kind of weird though. Usually that's from somebody setting the battery charger to nuclear. I don't know if they're wet cells or not. Let's put that back on there. That's kind of bizarre. There's a little piece of the puzzle, if you will. Here's our little auxiliary battery, 12 volter there. Looks like we're gonna need a 10 mil. Now being that these are coupled together and I don't want to determine whether or not the relay's latched or opened, it's just as easy to pull off a negative terminal, pull off a negative terminal and know that they're completely isolated and then we can do a test on them. Wow, I went to grab my Altel tester and lo and behold, it's dead. <laughs> uh, let's see here. We're gonna unhook our auxiliary battery, negative. And we will unhook our cranking battery, negative as well. Yeah, it's okay. So that one's unhooked. Ah, uh, let's see. Well, that's quite a unique little setup they've got there. All this stuff. Be nice to be able to get right to the terminal. Give it a proper good test. Wow, that's long-winded. <laughs> Couldn't have made that longer. That holds down the little strap here on top of this auxiliary battery. Both of these batteries are AGM according to service data. And then also it says right there, sealed AGM, do not open under the penalty of law. What's up, Miss Doe? Don't be a lawbreaker. I'm not. 200 CCA. What's up? I gotta run to the school. No, oh, one of the children probably, huh? Uh-huh. Always the children. Always. Oh, okay. We're gonna loosen that little guy up right there. There, now we can get to the plus side of that. Take that one off also. Chances are we're gonna be putting batteries in it, but you never know. 
we're going to use this tester because our Altel is DOA. Somebody, Josh, <coughs> left it on. Or Eric. I don't really know. So we're going to check with this little guy. So battery negative, battery positive. Now this one's 200 CCA of AGM action. It is not flooded. It is an AGM spiral according to what I read. I could be wrong. Oops. We're going to go cold cranking amps. We're going to crank this baby down to 200. All the way down there. Pretty sure I read it was a spiral cell. Womp, womp, womp. She tests out at a full three cold cranking amps. <laughs> Went down to 12.07 volts. There's our test results there. Bad replace. Even though it's not fully charged, it's only 40% state of charge at 12 point whatever it was when we started. Just in case I'm wrong here, I don't know as far as how this, we're gonna go back to AGM flat plate. I thought I read that it was a spiral cell, but I don't wanna be wrong. Yeah, so it's the same test result there. Okay, now let's test our main battery. Twelve and a half, we're gonna go with the flat plate. And then this one was six something. According to service data, it was supposed to be 730, but this one is 650 CCAs. So we'll crank her up to 650 here. We'll hit the go button. This one says it's still rated at 586 cold cranking amps out of the 650. So technically we could leave this one. Charge it up. But being ahead, the caps popped off it and given the age of it, I'll let the customer make the decision. I'll tell them what I saw, what my feelings are, what my hopes and dreams are. See what they would like to do. It is pretty interesting that those caps were popped off there. Certainly the uh, auxiliary batteries junk. Let me see about getting some of these today. And like I say, I'll give the customer the choice and see what this lady wants to do. And all those caps are popping off. Lady said, get her done. Get her done. Not exactly how she said it, but more or less. Let's pick this one right up and out of there. Oh, so there's that little fella. Mopey nuts. You guys hear that? Lawnmower man got himself an electric mower. Wow, it's just not gonna be the same. I'm pretty sure he's still got a rider. I've seen him using this electric mower before. I think in between charges he uses the gas mower. So there's this old rigor Moreau. probably could elect to pull the uh, air box out of it and just tip it backwards if you feel inclined to do so. Well, that's a big long one too. You know what? It might be the same bolt, I bet. Same hold down bolt. Ah, look at that. They were consolidating at the factory. This one threads in that far. That one threads in that far. And there's our battery hold down wedgie.
up and out on the cart. It does have a little napkin here that goes around it. Your oil absorption mat, I call it. It looks pretty good here. We're gonna stick that right back in there the way in which it was. And now we wait. Put a little never seize on the wedge bolt. I want to make sure that we have this going the correct direction. You see these two slots, they go into the tray. The tray has the corresponding male half, if you will. Get them lined up. Reach down here. Very gingerly start that. There's that little guy. Snug as a bug. We gotta wait for the other Napa to bring the auxiliary battery. The one Napa had the one battery. The other Napa had the other battery. Meanwhile, we'll get this baby loaded back up. That looks pretty clean. We're gonna run a brush in it anyways. Just to be on the safe side. She's bright and shiny. That terminal's bright and shiny. Set that down, we'll get a little bit of grease. I don't have any fluid film out here. Okay, it's very special. Smudge a little on there. Wipe the remaining right there. Can you mix these up? It doesn't appear that you can. At least not the purple one anyways. So that's pretty nice of them. Now if you notice, but when we unhooked these here, these were made differently, making it so you can't mix them up either. They have locators on them. See how it's got the two claws on it. This one's just got a single. So you can't really mix those up. We're not going to cram this down with the clickety clack gun. We're going to use a regular ratchet, so we'll go get one of them. There is a torque spec for all of these items. we'll do is after uh, after we're done making the video we'll come back through and torque all of those factory specs of course we don't want to hook our negative up just yet we're gonna wait for that auxiliary battery we are gonna clean it out though she's shiny these are pretty handy kind of old school I think hey it's that guy I think uh, these are Schumachers who makes these ones. I buy, get a half a dozen or so of these at a time. Eventually they get all crusty and gross. They look pretty gross, man. That terminal looks pretty dang clean on the top and the bottom. As well as that one, no corrosion, no nothing, still pretty shiny. So when the other Napa gets here, we'll get that one plugged in. Now I looked in service data, I didn't see anything specific 
or any type of special instructions indicating that we have to reset anything. Um, you know, you gotta kind of pay attention to that on uh, newer cars is are there are there resets that need to be done uh, you know battery system monitor battery registration anything of that matter making sure nap is being honest let's see 12.77 volts agm battery 760 cold crank amps on this little guy oh they're lucky And the results are in. 753 cold crank naps out of the 760 rated cold crank naps. Good job, napper. And or whoever makes your batteries. I think we need these. When I looked at the picture of the Napa battery, it didn't show any studs. Perhaps it comes with it, or perhaps we need to recycle these little studs. Here's this one from Nap. Get these things off there. Good thing we saved our studs. No core charge on this, which I thought was kind of unique. I even said that to the guy. I said, that's unique. Before we spin around and hit the uh, other post here, we'll go like this. Snug that one up to the appropriate torque spec. There's that. Now let's make sure we're keeping these boys honest too. This one is allegedly 200 cold cranking amps. Allegedly. 12.87 volts AGM. We got to crank her down to 200. 200, there it is. Enter. Above 32 degrees, yes. Let's see what the survey says. Three hundred and fifty-nine cold cranking amps. Wow, that's better than advertised, which is what you often see on brand new batteries. Usually, they test better than they better than they claim to be. That's not helpful. <laughs> you jerk! You jerk! Look what this guy did. Ah, this is what happens when you're not a professional. Giddy up. That one's going to reach. That was on the outside of the diaper, yes, sir. Okay, just want to make sure we had everything right now. I did pre juice this one up with some Never Seas also. around for this one. Nope, looks like we're gonna have to turn on the lights. Wow, I'm surprised you even have kids. Oh, there we go. We got her now, boys. Now 
There it is. We drove her home. Back to where we started. We thought a guy could make a video about changing a battery. How desperate is somebody to actually watch a guy change a battery? come back through and torque that again the factory specs are you flipping kidding me I loosen this one back up here I'm just gonna leave that started a little bit well we're learning as we go folks we do have to put the positive lead on first the way that this terminal is designed, the little rubber goes underneath the hold down. I don't know for any specific purpose, but that's just how it's designed. So what do you know? We're gonna smear just a little bit of in that corrosive compound here between the terminal and the battery. An old saying, life's a dance, you learn as you go, right? I don't know if it's a saying or a country song, but either way. So there's that. Yep, sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow. Back. We will put the lid back on it. Now the negative one does not have any special requirements. So we will line this hold down back up there. That's where that needs to be. Give that a healthy little squirt. Take the negative off here. Put some around there. Interesting how they made that rubber cap. How it fits under that hold down. There's that one torque to spec. That one's torque to spec. We're good to go, right? Everybody in here has had some tightness. We came back through, we torqued all of these to spec. It's kind of how that fits on there. It just makes tin connections throughout these fuses. So nothing wrong with that. Don't be alarmed. This is where you jump start it. If that's closed, you flick that up, jump start positive here, and then negative wherever. If I'm doing it, I'm putting the negative right on the battery. But just because you do something doesn't mean you do it right. We're gonna fire this little guy up, plug our scan tool back in. Now, if what we read in service information is correct, both of these will be charging if the power relay has closed itself. So we'll check this one first. We're at 14.3 on the auxiliary battery. And I'm going to assume that we have 14.3 here also. We 
do, 14.33. I don't know if you guys can see that. Well, you'll have to believe me, but I know we have trust issues. We'll get rid of that glare. Oh, now we got nothing. Oh, boy. There we go, 14.33 there. And here as well. So that's good. That's something something good, something you can talk about. Whoops, man down. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to do here, folks, other than clear the codes. So to show you that rubber on that auxiliary battery goes underneath the bracket, just in case you're wondering here. Let's get some. There we go. You see how that goes underneath the bracket there? All right, it'll make sense when you're putting it together. Just do the opposite of everything I did. Now we screwed up. We got a C2222 in the ABS for an improper power down event. Looking on service info, it's not a big deal. It's weird. It says that, it sets that code. If during a parking brake actuation, power is lost, like at the exact moment the parking brake is applied, which we didn't nobody's even in the car it was turned off and it sets that code when it doesn't know the position of the parking brake so we're going to start it and you can't clear the code either it doesn't turn any lights on we're going to apply the parking brake parking brake works we're going to release the parking brake oh now we're moving we're gonna cycle it one more time. Oops, gotta hold my foot on the brake. Okay. All right, we're good to go. Now, let's go see if we can clear that code now because it should recognize the position of the parking brake, hopefully. Let's turn our key on. I remember back when I was a kid, parking brakes had cables. At least that's what everybody says. Let's see, can we erase the codes now? That's what I'll be telling my grandbabies. Hey, Mrs. O. Back when I was a kid, cars had cables for parking brakes. Uh, Where are you going? You out of here? You leaving me? Should I? No. Come on. We need you. No codes detected. Hooray. Huzzah. All right, 29 different computers to make the car go down the road. People are like, I get so pissed when my car breaks down. I'm like, I'm just blown away that the damn things even work. Because think about it, this is not even really a modern car. 2018 has 29 computers in it, 29 individual computers. You're just gonna walk by and not say anything? You were talking, oh. you wanna interrupt. Okay, good woman. Uh, 29 different computers from everything to make it run, to make the safety system works, to infotainment, which is what a lot of this you know, stuff falls down to. Creature comforts, your automatic heaters and your screens and all that stuff. And people do question and say, oh, I can't believe it's broke, I can't believe it's broke. Take all of that, put 100,000 miles on it, that's enough to drive around the world, our planet that we live on four times and most cars can go that far without any major malfunction. To me, that's a friggin' miracle. <laughs> I'm happy when mine starts in the morning. I'm just like, I don't know how they do it, but they do. Anyhow, I don't know how I would do without you leaving a comment in that comment section. Are you gonna walk by us again? This is all, again? I'm coming back to do it again. All right, questions, comments, concerns, Insta, the Facebook, you guys know where to find us. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.